how to prepare for the next rally in the stock market right so this video i'll be explaining to you some of the things to look out for uh, as we anticipate the next bull run uh, in the in the in, in the US indices essentially right so but a couple of things we need to take into consideration uh, currently we're in September so it means that we are in a bearish seasonality for indices right so expecting indices to go lower so I'm gonna firstly cover that before we get into uh, what we expect or anticipate moving forward right so first and foremost right in front of you we have the VIX right so this is the volatility index right uh, volatility S&P 500 index so essentially what we are looking at is that it shows us the market's expectation of future volatility on the S&P 500 in the next 30 days. I've done a couple of videos that I've touched on the volatility index and I'll just link the video right up, right up on top. Uh, you can watch that video to get more of a clearer breakdown of what the volatility index is, right? But what I want to cover here or what I want you to understand from the volatility index is that it moves in the opposite direction to indices or US indices to be specific. So it means that if volatility is going higher or price of volatility is rising, then US 500, NASDAQ, US 30 will start to fall, right? That is the key thing that I want you to understand. And then in addition to that, coming back to the to what I mentioned about the seasonality in September uh, of weakness in indices, the, the, the what I've highlighted here using these, uh, using these sort of um, rectangles, that I have here, this is the month of August and September where we saw volatility push higher. So this is since 2020 essentially, right? So I just looked at the past four years just to show you guys what uh, what what everyone is, is, is talking about, right? So as you can see, I'm just gonna use these uh, vertical lines to show here, right? So the bottoms that were made around August to September, right? And then obviously you can clearly see that here volatility pushed higher, right? Volatility started to increase in terms of its uh, price or the price of, of the volatility index started to rise, right? Therefore, that meant that uh, the US 30, NASDAQ and uh, S&P 500 started to fall, right? So obviously we do not only pay attention to the volatility index or the VIX, but this is used as a fear gauge. And if it starts to rise, then everything else starts to bleed, right? And starts to fall. But in essence, I just want to give you guys sort of a picture of what we're anticipating for the month of September. And then going out of the month of September, moving forward, if obviously the US economy does, does not deteriorate any further than what we're seeing right now, because the US economy, yes, there might be recessionary fears, but for now, it's not really a done deal, right? There is a possibility of a soft landing. And if that is, and if there is a possibility of a soft landing, then that means that there is a possibility that we see another rally in the in the US indices, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to overlay uh, US 30. So we're gonna start with US 30, right? So you can clearly see that now we have US 30. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to hide the volatility index now. Uh, let's just hide yeah now I'm hiding the volatility index now you can clearly see that during the same months uh, the month of September is sorry August to September where we see, we generally see away for the past four months yes you can back test this way past four months or way back past for 2020 you will be able to identify this right but I'm just using the last four months to so that we don't you know, I don't make this video any longer than it should be so as you can clearly see here that during this month what was happening with the with the with the um us with us 30 sorry you can clearly see that it was moving sideways obviously essentially it was dropping right it was moving sideways or dropping uh that was what we had in 2020 right then in 2021 we had a drop right and then in 2020 sorry 2022 we also had a that is when we had a major drop because obviously the federal reserve had had, had started embarking on interest rate hikes around march 2022 right you can clearly see we had a very massive drop uh also august 2023 we had a massive drop now what we are seeing is that we are aware now we are in september 2024 and we have started to see or what we saw even last week we saw indices actually start to sell off right so this is something that you need to pay attention to. So what does that mean? That means that moving forward for the month of September, we are anticipating lower prices on indices. But also something that is important to realize is that what has been happening after September, 
we generally see the market start to bottom around September, end of September into October or mid end of October. That is when we see what indices start to bottom and start to rally. As you can clearly see, they generally rally after that. They generally rally after that. They generally rally after that. So no, nothing different here, especially because we're anticipating that the Federal Reserve is actually going to start cutting rates on the 18th of September. So that would also feed into that uh, expectation of what of uh, of uh, of the of the U.S. indices actually pushing higher. Obviously, context is very important. Like I always stress, that you need to understand the context of what is currently happening. But this is what I'm anticipating, and this is what I'm expecting. And like I said, as long as the U.S. economy does not deteriorate any further, as long as there is a possibility of a soft landing, but if there is no possibility of a soft landing and there is an increased risk of a recession, then we might not see that rally in indices, right? We might see something that happened uh, around the likes of 2008 or even COVID recession 20, 2020, where we saw this huge sell-off, right? This is something that we might see instead of that push higher after September mid october so on and so forth right so that is what i wanted to show you guys here so let us also now look at us 500 right we are not gonna look at nasdaq because they pretty much do the same thing all of these us indices but you can clearly see the same thing with uh, with the us 500 right previously we were looking at us 30 now this is us 500 pretty much the same thing right pretty much the same thing that we that we saw that we saw happening uh with the us 30 right you can clearly see that move sideways then it started to rally after september mid october towards the end of october we saw that rally right so that is also what i'm expecting right now or not right now essentially but after this whole seasonality of september where we see volatility starts to pick up and uh us indices start to fall right so that is the first part of what i wanted to highlight in preparation of our opportunities to actually buy uh indices obviously we need to also look to take advantage of these uh, selling opportunities on indices, right? So if I go back to US 30, uh, obviously we need to, as you can see, price is pulling, is pushing higher. Then obviously we do have this level right here, which is this sort of supply, because this is a weekly time frame. This is a weekly bearish engulfing. And then we do have this, what? The supply level, right? So if price gets back to it and gives us opportunities to actually go short, then you can look to short. But what I'm, what I'm trying to actually pay uh shift your focus on is that you are shorting in anticipation that you are going to get opportunities to sell if the u.s economy does not deteriorate any further and if there is still a possibility of a soft landing but if there's no possibility of a soft landing and an increased risk of a recession then you can look to hold on to those sell positions right so this is what i just wanted to share with you as the first part of this video right okay so now we are just going to read this, uh, not really read, but go over this article that we have here. So the, the headline is Wall Street advances on soft landing optimism, focus on crucial inflation data. Obviously, we're going to have the US CPI data this week. Uh, yes, there is optimism of the soft landing. Like I said, there's still a possibility, right? It's not uh, it's not game over yet for the US economy, right? There's still a possibility of a soft landing. So what I just want to go over here is that... Uh, so this was for Friday because we saw the massive sell-off on Friday. So global markets were rattled last week as uncertainty over the U.S. economy's health rippled across assets, adding fuel to an already volatile period that has investors grappling with a shift in the Federal Reserve's policy and worries over stretched valuations. Right. So these are all the things you need to take into consideration, obviously. Friday's weaker than expected August jobs data spurred worries on econ economic growth driving the Nasdaq composite to its worst week since January 2022, while the S&P 500 saw its, its biggest weekly drop since March 2023, right? Then markets will be squarely focused on US, sorry, US consumer prices data on Wednesday that is expected to show a moderation in headline inflation in August to 2.6% 2, to on a yearly basis, while on a monthly basis, is expected, it is expected to remain unchanged at 0.2. Then Ronald Temple, chief marketing strategist at uh, Lazard, said that while the inflation battle is not fully won, it appears safe to say that the Fed should feel comfortable that inflation is sufficiently under control to begin moving monetary policy in less restrictive direction. If that happens, obviously, which is what we're expecting or anticipating um, 
on the 18th of September, then that will be supportive, obviously, for what? For risk assets, it will be supportive for indices. But obviously, we're still in that seasonality of September weakness. Uh, we might not see that rally yet. But granted, once again, guys, context is very important. What is happening with the US economy? If it's deteriorating any further than the, any, in, or if it's deteriorating worse than what it is right now, then that might, like I said, the rally in indices, you might just put that on hold or just push that further into the future right so as you can see that's what they're saying there right and then uh then money markets currently see a 75 sorry 73 percent chance of a 25 basis point which is 0 0.25 rate cut uh by the fed next week and expect a total monetary easing of 100 basis points that's one percent by the end of uh, uh by the end of the year this year right so that means that it would move their interest rates from 5.25 to 5.5 to 4.25 to 4.5 by the end of this year that's 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 a very aggressive pricing right that is according to the cme's fed watch tool right but in 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 essence what i'm saying is that look for selling opportunities right now do not try and fight the seasonality or fight the bias that the market is moving with then when the opportunity arises outside of september mid august uh sorry mid 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 october then you can start to look for those bullish opportunities granted that the economy has not deteriorated any further right so this is what i wanted to share in terms of uh this article right here okay so now the last component that i want us to look at is the yield curve right so this is dynamic yield curve right from stock charts uh, essentially how we look at the yield curve uh it's either it can either be inverted normal which is steepening or it can be flattening right so essentially during this three different stages how i like to interpret it is that if it's inverted then it's telling us that a recession a recession is around the corner right by around the corner i do not mean tomorrow right essentially a couple of months maybe 18 to 24 months right but it's telling us that we need to be aware that a recession is around the corner right and in an inverted yield curve that is what we look at and potentially it's time to be bearish right in an in a flattening yield curve it's telling us what that a short term there is short term bullish momentum so if it has inverted and then it starts to flatten now what it's telling us is that short term we are bullish but long term we are uncertain right and then positive or a steepening which is a normal yield curve that is telling us that we are essentially we should look to be bullish what uh bullish on the what on the u.s economy or bullish on the s p 500 essentially right because that means that the big money is also moving bullish right that is essentially how i can summarize this to you obviously it's it's not just as simplified as i just tried to make it uh, we need to understand that this is essentially a comparison between shorter term interest rates as well as longer term interest rates so if the central bank is raising interest rates then the shorter term interest rates are, are the ones that actually what that actually react the quickest and they start going up then eventually the higher the long the shorter term interest rates pays a better premium or a, a higher interest or yield than the longer term interest rate which that is not normal right because under normal circumstances the longer term should be paying you a higher interest if you lock in your money or an investment for a longer term then you need to demand a higher interest because there's a lot of uncertainty that can happen in 10 years and 30 years right so that is that is yeah i'm just trying to summarize the, the yield curve for you but why what am i why am i sharing this with you so obviously based on what i've just explained uh, uh in the past two segments where i looked at the actual but vix as well as the seasonality in september and then i also looked at the actual uh what is the uh, what the article is saying now let us look at the yield curve right so this what we can do right here so what i'm gonna do this is the s p 500 right here and then you can clearly see this is the yield curve that we have right here shorter term interest rates as you can see three months two year five year and then up to 30 years then here at the bottom you can clearly see whether it's inverted so on and so forth but what i want us to see is that currently let's go to where we are today so where we are today the yield curve is normalizing right it, it's essentially moved from flattening it's normalizing but before that the yield curve was inverted around june 2024 the yield curve was inverted right so generally if the yield curve is inverted like i said it's telling us that re possible recession ahead but obviously the yield curve inverted around march it was a march 2022 uh, the first time it, it inverted it was around March 2022, if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay, August 2022. Let's say August 2022. But that's, I think it was around March 2022, the first time it dipped below zero. We're obviously going to look at that on the chart. But here it says September 2022, right? That is when the yield curve inverted. And obviously that meant that recession ahead or recession around the corner. And like I said, it does not mean recession tomorrow, but recession in the in the next months to come or in the next, uh, yeah, the next months to come, right? So... But you can clearly see the stock market the stock market continued to rally even though i said that means that you should be getting ready to be bearish obviously if the if the if the economy in terms of the data is also supporting that the economy is heading in a recession right so we went we went from yield curve being inverted and now the yield curve is flat what i can generally say is that the yield curve is flat and then now it has disinverted because if we we're going to look at the actual yield curve uh, on 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 trading economic uh, sorry on trading view and i'm gonna show you why i say now it's disinverted obviously here it also says that it is normal which means that now it is possibly steepening because now the yield curve is positive right so that is a good thing like i said because it means that the big man is getting geared to be bullish but obviously also take into consideration the context of the economy right if there is recessionary risk then nothing else matters the markets will be behaving because of recessionary risk and recess recessionary fears but if there's there's an increased chance and possibility or the likelihood of a soft landing increases drastically then that means what then the, then that means that markets will be more bullish or more risk on right so this is that is what i'm that is why i say you need to be aware of the context how is the data developing in the u.s economy or for the u.s economy for you to just uh don't trade blindly that's what i'm trying to say right so what we are looking at right now is that it went from inverted to now disin dis disinverting right or to no to steepening again we've had instances where that happened right so early 2000 right we had an inverted yield curve as you can see inverted then it as you can clearly see then it normalized right so that was early 2000 we had an inverted yield curve then it normalized but obviously this is where we, it normalized uh uh when it inverted it was signaling the dot-com bubble right remember the the, the dot-com recession in 2001 uh and obviously this federal reserve started to cut interest rates to stimulate the economy right and obviously you can clearly see eventually it normalized we also had that around 2007 2008 remember the 2008 financial crisis you can clearly see the yield curve was inverted it flattened inverted flattened and then it normalized just around the peak just around the peak that is when it normalized and then it started to crash because you can see it inverted around 2006 so around 2006 that is when the yield curve inverted right and then but then the, the stock market continued rallying higher Every so, similar to what we saw here, yield, yield curve inverted around August 2022, the stock market continued to push higher because conditions were conducive for that, right? Condition, conditions were supportive of that. That is why I say always understand the context of what is happening. But as you can clearly see that the, the yield curve normalized around just before we had the actual crash, right? So as you can see, it disinverted in 2007 as the Fed began, began cutting interest rates aggressively to counter the economic downturn, right? So what I'm, what, what, where am I going with this? So what is the point I'm trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is that right now we have, we've seen that it went from inverted to flattening, then disinverted, right? And we are around the highs. I'm not saying something that we, see, that we saw in around 2008 is what will happen right now, no. But what am I trying to say? Pay attention to the data. If the more... The recessionary risks increase and the fed now needs to cut interest rates aggressively to counter an economic downturn then we might see this scenario right not necessarily a fall in this a fall for uh, a fall in, in in price of this magnitude but it, this is what i mean right that in as much as a normally a a, a a a steepening yield curve or a normal yield curve signals that we need to be look for bullish opportunities but also understand the context Right now, the Fed is, is going to be cutting interest rates because of disinflation, because inflation is headed towards target. Unemployment, yes, is ticking up slightly, but not because of recessionary fears or they are tr trying to counter or they are trying to stimulate the economy or trying to counter an economic downturn, right? That is not the reason why they are cutting right now. But today, uh, September, September, September 9th, 2024, that is not the reason why we're expecting them to cut on the 18th. But if the risks 
increase that they are going to be cutting because they are trying to do what they are trying to counter the economic downturn or a recessionary risk then in that case we can expect what the stock market to tank or indices to tank and like i said we are looking for selling opportunities then in that case you might look to hold on to those sell that or to those sell positions that you you would have opened on what on the us indices right so this is exactly why i'm explaining this us yield curve so that you understand that context matters i've looked at we've looked at three different variables but then what is key it is the context what is happening currently that is the key thing the context right so as you can clearly see that that is what happened here and then also around 2019 2020 when we had the when we had the, the covid recession around 2019 the yield curve uh slightly inverted uh let's see was it 2019 okay so let me let me try and animate and let's see if it shows me if i'm animating just to see if it if it is visible here uh, okay it's not it's not visible on this yield curve right here so i'm just gonna pause this right but essentially in 20 we saw the yield curve invert briefly or shortly in 2019 signaling obviously concerns about economic slowdown and economic growth obviously the fed had started to 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 cut interest rates around 29 that's when they started uh and then obviously it disinverted in early 2020 as the pandemic hit and then obviously central banks started to cut interest rates and then obviously quantitative easing so on and so forth right so the key thing or the key takeaway is that pay attention to context right we had the yield curve invert in august 2022 that's what it says or based on the yield curve uh on the dynamic yield curve but based on trading economics sorry trading view it was around march 2022 uh then now the yield curve has disinverted again and we are around the highs so what do you need to pay attention to the economic activity or, or the economic growth of the u.s economy if the fed is cutting interest rates because they are trying to do what they are trying to stimulate the economy or to counter and a downturn in the u.s economy then that could result in a massive sell-off right but if they are cutting interest rates like right now because of disinflation then we obviously can we can anticipate that the stock market will be supported after after those interest rate cuts right obviously also take into consideration the seasonality right that is what i wanted to cover in this video guys just to give you guys a short lesson to understand how you can look at different variables but also not negating or neglecting the context where the market is currently trading and what is currently happening or currently developing right so now we're gonna go back to trading uh trading view to see to look at the actual yield curve on trading view okay so now we are back on trading uh trading view so this is the yield curve the actual yield curve this is essentially the 10 year that you, you can clearly see us 10 year yield versus the us two year yield right so as you can clearly see here this is why i say uh as you can clearly see september 2019 it crossed below zero right so once it crosses below zero and trades in the negative that is when it inverts that is why i said it inverted uh briefly or shortly uh or for a short period in 2019 even though we did not see that on the dynamic yield curve this is what we saw here and then it started pushing higher right so as you can see march 2022 this was the first time it traded back below zero into the negative since 2019 that is why i said it firstly inverted in what in uh in um in uh, in march 2022 but as you can clearly see around june uh the yield curve the yield curve the dynamic yield curve says around august that is when it fully inverted but as you can clearly see that now for the first time since june 2022 for the first time it's trading above what it's trading above zero so now it has disinverted again but remember what i said here's the game plan it has disinverted we are now looking for bullish opportunities but we are currently in that seasonality of weakness september seasonality of weakness for u.s indices so we're expecting we're looking for selling opportunities on u.s indices but if the u.s economy further deteriorates then this disinversion can lead actually lead what actually lead to a, a crash in the u.s in the in the u.s indices if the u.s economy deteriorates and then we have heightened recessionary fears then in that regard then we can actually look to hold on to our sell opportunities on the u.s stock market or u.s indices to be uh to be precise right so 
this is what I wanted to share with you guys that just this is a lesson like like I said just a brief lesson to help you guys understand a couple of things with the US indices and some of the things that you can look at if you are considering to actually trade them right but for now the markets are being driven by seasonality so let's go back to the to the volatility index uh, the markets are actually being driven by seasonality and uh, we do anticipate that the that the US uh, indices will continue to fall for the month of September and then they'll start to rebound uh, around October so moving forward right granted that the US economy is not in a recession. If the US economy is in a recession, then the Fed will be cutting interest rates because they are trying to do what? To counter the economic downturn. So they will implement aggressive interest rate cuts. Probably that's also why the market is pricing in around 1% of cuts in 2024. Uh, yeah, can be the market can do anything. The market can go e in either direction, but this is just to give you guys a heads up so that you have a game plan that, okay, if, if excuse my friend if shit hits the fan then you know what to do right you know what to do sticks hold your hold hold on to your sell positions on the u.s indices but if that does not happen and then there's an increase uh probabilities of a soft landing then in that in that regard then you just look to buy after the actual uh september weakness that we are going to witness uh on the u.s uh indices right so yeah gentlemen uh ladies and gentlemen that's what i wanted to share in this video right and of course check out our free telegram channel uh just click the first link in the description and also if you want to learn more obviously check out um the, the 12 day trading challenge that we have that is starting on the 16th of september which is next week monday that is when we'll be starting our next challenge but other than that i hope you found value from this video and you learn from this video save this video share this video because i'm sure it, there is someone you might know that might benefit from this video so do not mind sharing it to them uh, so that it can help them and impact their trading in a positive way but other than that subscribe if you have not yet subscribed i'm gonna see you guys in the next video